So this is a tutorial on how to go about making your own um, booty um, pattern on any design you want using um, a measuring tape and a pair of flip-flops. I'm going to explain a few things with that. Okay. Um, I've already made a couple of pairs as if you've been watching my face my Facebook business page the limb muse you'll know I've been working on this okay this is an outline of my foot all right and what you want to do is if you're making this for someone make sure they put all their weight on it and you trace their foot out and you cut it out okay and as you can see this is like just barely encompasses the actual flip-flop which is fine you want that so that your move you your foot isn't sloshing around everywhere so you want it to fit almost exactly in line with the mold so that's the goal first is if you trace this out and you're taking it to a store find which size this is a seven to eight and so that should fit your average sizing um but you want to find out what sizing is going to fit close to the molding so that's the first thing you want to do when you're going out and buying and you may already have these at home you may be one who likes to buy the dollar flip-flops at summertime which is fine that's what you want okay well you're going to need some measurements and i'm going to show pictures of what the measurements are as i'm explaining this okay but first you are going to need to know what size you're going to need and so i know i'm working with a um, seven to eight sizing okay and i've already cut off my flip-flop bottoms and everything okay on here what I have for your formula is you're going to measure the ball of the foot, okay? And you're going to put the weight on it and you're going to measure the ball of the foot. And this is where it's going, to, and I'm going to show you a picture of what this looks like. Okay, what we're going to do is you're going to see that as BOF, ball of foot. That's your measurement, okay, in the formula. Then you're going to need to get a swatch done, okay? And because I've already made one and everything, this is my swatch. And what I'm going to tell you about this particular swatch that I'm using is you'll want to do a 10 by 10 of a yarn. So you want to do 10 stitches, 10 rows, and then you're going to measure out how many is an inch and that kind of thing. But you got to decide on what loom you want to use, okay? While you have the measurement of the ball of your foot, you got to figure out what loom you're going to use. You need to figure out what kind of yarn you want to use, and then you got to figure out what kind of gauge. Okay, for this project here, I used a um, seven yar, uh, size 7 yarn in the Red Heart Grand, and I did two peg knitting, which is kind of like zippy loom knitting. And um, so I ended up using a 36 peg loom, okay? But what you want to do is you want to do a swatch and you want to measure out how many stitches it takes to make an inch and how many rows it takes to make an inch, okay? And on the formula here, ST will represent the number of stitches per inch and then R represents the number of rows per inch, okay? Now, a general guide to go by is if you're going to work with a seven, size seven yarn, I would suggest doing two peg knitting or using a gauge that's pretty wide, um, three-fourths inch gauge, which when you look at the Nifty Knitters and Boy Looms, you get that. Um, and because I usually like to work with a half ga inch gauge, you can work with like the Hometown USA stuff. And I used a 36 peg loom for that and that worked fine for me. Um, I'm going to show you an example of this doing the two peg on the 36 peg loom, but I've done the 36 peg loom um, with this process. Okay, so generally if you're doing worsted, I would suggest 3 8 inch gauge. If you're doing anywhere from bulky to super bulky, do a half inch to higher. And if you want to do a finer yarn, which you might need a much bigger loom for and for the fourth inch and you want to use a finer yarn um, for fingering or um, DK weight then you're going to be looking at the fourth inch gauge okay and, and you're going to do that inch thing okay so to figure out the loom you need you need to do the ball of foot times your stitches 
and that equals the number of pegs you'll need. Okay, and you'll need to find whatever loom you get that comes closest to it. If you have a little bit more of pegs or a little bit less, that's fine, just close to it. Um, for example, my foot measures nine inches. Okay, so what I want to do is take my ball of foot, which is nine inches, and times that by the number of stitches, which was two stitches per inch with this here, and that makes a total of 18. Okay, I'll need 18 stitches. Well, double that because I'm doing two peg knitting, I need a 36 peg loom. Okay, and I get three rows per inch in my measurement, and I need that for later. So I'm going to keep that base information there. That's important. Okay, well, the next thing that you want to do, okay, you want to take your mold. Okay, you want to take your mold and you need to measure it. You need to measure its length. You need to measure its width at the heel and the toe. And I'll give you a little trick. Once you know the heel, you pretty much know the toe over here. And it's going to be a decreasing down of the same amount. Okay, this is what I found. Okay, and in my measurement, it's 3 inches, which I'll show you a picture. And in my length, it's 10 inches, which I'll show you a picture. Okay, keep that in mind. You're going to need that information, okay? All right, so you need to know what the number total of rows for your length is going to be. And what you're going to do is you're going to do, say I got 10 as an example, you're going to go your length. You're going to take the length and you're going to multiply it by the number of rows in your swatch okay and that gives you the number total of rows that you'll need for the length of the foot and you're going to write that down so mine was 10 times 3 which is 30 rows total alright well you need to know the width here times the number of stitches okay so what we're going to do is going to go 3 times 2 is the number of decreases okay on a total you're going to go down to um, six stitches between your wraps and turns is what that means okay so that is your total there is six all right now here's where the formula of being able to write up the pattern is important you want to take your number of pegs or with this the number of stitches and you're going to divide it by in half and that's going to give you number A. And what number A represents is half the stitches being used. Okay, that's half the loom. All right, and that's usually what the area you're going to work on for your toe and your heel is going to be. Typically, if you've made socks, this should be understanding as to what you're doing. It's half the pegs, half the stitches of what you're using to work your decreases down and your increases up to make your heel and your toe area. Okay, so keep that in mind. That's important. Number A is what that represents. Okay, and what you want to do is you want to do number, number A minus the number of decreases, which is up here, when you did your width times your stitches and you have we had six okay so what we would do is we would put nine minus six in there and we would get the number B which would be three well you want even number amount of decreases so we're gonna round that up and we're gonna make that four okay so we're gonna do four wrap and turns total two on one side two on the other side okay and we're gonna keep that in mind which means you're gonna have four rows that you're going to be doing to do that. Okay, so what number B represents is the number of rows to decrease. Alright, so we're going to be doing four rows to decrease. Keep that in mind because what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to take that number B and multiply it by two because you're going to be doing the same amount for the heel as you are for the toe, which means you're doing it twice. Okay, and that gives you number C. Number C is the number of rows for the toe and the heel with the decreases. Okay, and that gives you a total number. Okay, that means you're going to be using eight rows to do the toe and the heel 
Okay, so you're going to take C and you're going to minus it by the um, actual row total up here. So you're going to take 30 and you're going to minus it from C. All right, so you're going to minus 30 from C and you're going to get number D. And number D is going to be the number of rows between the toe and the heel. So after you've completed your toe and your heel, this is the number of rows you're going to be doing. Since it ended up being um, four rows here and four rows here, which makes a total of eight, you're going to minus eight from 30. All right. And um, it's looking like I've done some malfunctioning here. Originally I kept with the 6 and then it would have been 24, but because we're doing, we're minusing 8 from 30, it's going to be 22 rows. Okay, so you're going to be doing 22 rows in between your toe and your heel. And that is going to be how you gauge up what you're doing there, okay? So that means that after you do your cuff, however, however many rows you want to do on your cuff or anything, I'm going to show you how to do this pattern here. Um, but what that means is once you get done, you're going to wrap and turn down to where you have two decreases on one side, two decreases on the other. So you have two wrap and turns on either side. Then you're going to work your way back out. And then you're going to do 22 rows. Then you're going to do the same thing that you did for the heel that you did for the toe. Okay. And here is where it can get interesting. You can either do a drawstring toe finish, which I did here, except I didn't drawstring. I did my last left, my last stitches remaining. I did a little Kitchener bind off, which is sometimes easier when you're working with less stitches to deal with. But you can do a drawstring toe finish. You can do a wrap and turn with a Kitchener bind off. Or you can do this all in reverse. You can do a Kitchener cast on and then go in complete reverse. I've done all of it. So I've done all of it for this technique. Um, but it works just like a sock, except you're having to use this as your mostly your base here. This is what you're having to do. Once you make this up, we're almost done and I could be able to get to the actual instructions. What this is done, you're going to be able to go in and line up the heel and the toe and then what you're going to do is you're going to do either a crochet or an I-cord that is the length around the actual mold so you'd measure how much is around the mold and I like to do a chain with a single crochet on um, there and then you hot glue it thoroughly around the edge and then you can sew on your booty okay and that's how it looks great and you still have cushioning at the bottom that you don't have to add to if unless you want to and it fits and it works so good I suggest sewing with yarn not with um, not with thread you want to sew it up with yarn it makes it more solid and you can add some goo into the holes if you want to make it kind of more waterproof where you can walk outside in these things. But that's kind of how I'm doing this. So that's the guide. Um, I will give a link so that you have the formula below with all the images attached to it. And I'm going to show you how to make this um, particular ribbed booty using two peg knitting for this pattern here. So um, continue watching and you can use this guide as a guide on how to do things on your own. Um, but that's kind of how you go in and you figure out how to work up a booty to match these so it's easy to sew together after you've done your edging here. You can do ribbon if you would like. You can do different things. But that's basically how you add a flip-flop sole to a booty. But let's get started on how to actually make the booty so that it fits onto the sole just like this, where it's easy, it's going to be easy to sew on. So we're going to start with that and go from there. But um, take, in, take your time, look at this, figure it out from here. 
how to do it, um, but this is all formula based. It's a plug and play. Yes, it's a little bit of algebra involved, but once you have your numbers and you plug them into place, they it works out great. So um, again, I'm going to give you a link to properly typed up and pictures and everything formula below, but this kind of gives you an explanation of what you're looking at. And so we're going to move on from here and start making an actual booty. Okay, I've got my loom here, my 36 peg loom on a half inch gauge, and I'm using Red Heart Grand, and it's a size super bulky six and I'm going to be using it as a two peg knitting kind of thing. Um, if you have a zippy loom you can do um, 18 pegs in a square on a zippy loom to do this project. It's 46 yards. You're going to need two skeins to do um, a pair. Alright, so I'm going to let you know you need two skeins if you're going to do a pair. Alright, so to get started I'm going to work cuff down. All right. So I'm going to be working here, down, and over. And I'm going to show you how to do a gusset heel because I like the fact that it gives a nice smooth design all the way down to the heel and then you can move out. Okay, so I'm going to do two peg knitting, which is treating two pegs as one peg for a stitch. And so I'm just going to do an e-wrap cast on of all the pegs which would make 18 stitches which is lining up with our calculation that we've done here. Okay. Alright. So we've done our cast on and I'm going to do a design. And this is going to be a kind of rib stitch design. I can't remember the name of the actual rib stitch. Um, but it shows up, the design shows up three times, okay? And we're going to follow that all the way down. And we're going to do it um, so many times, okay? But we're going to be treating it as working two pegs as one stitch. So go ahead and do your ear up cast on and um, I'm fixing to show you how to start doing this particular rib stitch styling. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do this. What you're going to do is you're going to do a knit one, purl one, knit two, then you're going to purl two. Okay. We're going to go over it again. We're going to knit one, purl one, knit two, Pearl two, and you're going to continue that around. That's row one. This is a two row set, so that's row one. Okay, our second set is going to be our second row, which we do a two row repeat. This is our second row. We're going to do knit two. Pearl one, knit one, pearl two. I'm going to show the second set one more time. You're going to knit two. Pearl one, 
knit one, purl two. I'm going to repeat this all the way around. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to repeat row one and row two, because this is row two. So you're going to repeat row one and row two, and you're going to repeat it a total of 14 times for your cuff. So go ahead and pause the video and complete that much, and then we'll work on the gusset heel. Okay, I'm to my gusset heel, and I'm going to be working where it said that I would be working with nine um, stitches is half. I'm looking at my design here and you see a rib stitch here and a rib stitch here and when I count it over one two three four five six seven eight nine it's just one peg short of completing this knit stitch here so I'm going to add ten now you have this choice if you wanted to be able to easily complete a pattern back and forth which that would be which leaves you two pearls here two pearls here with the rib stitch here as you see here okay that makes it easier so if you find something when you're creating a design that would make it easier by adding one stitch to the heel rather than doing it exactly as you have written it's fine okay with the gusset heel you're not going to do wraps and turns but you're going to do the equivalent of the number of rows that would take you to do the wraps and turns on here, I think I had written that I needed to do four decreases. Um, looking at this, from here to here, four decreases would get me to here. Okay. I think, looking at it, that I'd like to decrease it by one on each side one more time. Okay. Now, if you want to be strict and follow the pattern, go for what I've written, okay? But for me, I think it could get, it could handle one more decrease, which means I'm going to do six total rows rather than four for my heel. So I'm going to do six rows back and forth, continuing with this design, okay? Now, if you want to follow your patterning, you want to do four rows and then go into the gusset where you're lifting off to. Okay, so what I'm going to do is knit, then I'm going to purl, then I'm going to knit, knit, then I'm going to purl two, Then I'm going to knit one, purl one, and knit two. Okay. I'm going to skip that first one, okay, and then I'm going to purl one, okay. So I'm going to purl one, and we've j we're starting on row two of our gusset heel, okay, letting you know. Then you're going to go knit two, then you're going to purl two, knit one, purl one, and knit two. Now you're going to repeat what we just did going back the other direction and you're going to do this for a total of six rows. This is row two, so you got four more rows to do. Okay, So you're going to skip that first one, which means you're just going to go send it behind and then over to the next one. You're going to purl the first one, and then you're going to knit two, and then you're going to purl two, and 
then you're going to knit one, purl one, knit two. And you're going to continue that patterning until you have six rows. Okay, so you should end up over here on your sixth row. I'm going to go back the direction I came. Again, you're going to skip, start with a purl, and go that direction. You're going to repeat that until you have six total rows if you're doing this pattern, or four if you're wanting to stick with the um, the written formula we've got going, okay? All right, so go ahead and pause the video and complete that many rows, and then I'll show you how to continue on with the gusset heel. Okay, we've done our six rows, and then we did a row all the way back to here and stopping just before the last three. What you want to do is you want to take the last three stitches on each side going from the outer edge in and put them on a stitch holder. Because I'm going to be using this one next, I'm going to stick it over one. Okay. And then I'm going to go on this side and I'm going to pick up three stitches from here. Okay. So one, two, three. And hold it to the center. And you want to go from the out to the in. Okay, and then what you want to do is you want to do a straight knit across and then knit two together on the end where you've added the stitches. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to be adding the stitches back. So you're going to go onto this side and you're going to pull a stitch up and you're going to add it back. Okay. You're going to do this until you have no more stitches on the um, stitch holders. Make sure that you get them on the two loops, okay, on the two pegs, the single loop on the two pegs. All right, so go ahead and just knit back and forth and add the stitches on the ends until you have no more stitches on your stitch holder, and then we'll go from there. We're going to be adding these little chain things back to the pegs to complete our gusset heel. But go ahead and complete adding these stitches back and then we will go from there. Okay, I finished my gusset and you see that I've already attached the chains on this side. Now I need to attach the chains on this side. And what you want to do is you want to see this. You'll see there's one chain, two chains, and there's your third chain right there. Sometimes they can be a little difficult to see. But what you want to do is you want to go in and I want to say put the inside one in on first and get it stretched out so put that on there first and then take the inside chain one and put that one on the next one and then the inside chain and put that on the next one and then you can put the outside of the chain on next. I find that's a little easier. And you want to do this so that you don't have any gaps. Okay, so there's that and that's how you attach the chain. And I typically start from the outer edge and move inwards. I find that that's a little easier to see what you've got. Okay, now that we're there, we're going to knit we're going to go in and we're going to knit these chains off. Now we add them back and then we knit them off. Okay, so we're going to knit that off. Okay, and now we're to purl two. So we're now keeping up with this. So what you're going to do is you're going to purl two. Then you're going to knit one, purl one, knit two, and purl two. Okay, at this point you're going to be starting your foot part, which we decided was 20 rows. Okay, so you're going to repeat this two row patterning um, 
for 20 rows. So I'm going to show you how to do that and um, go from there. But that's how you finish the gusset heel. Okay, so what you're going to do for your first row on these two rows is you're going to knit 10 stitches. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then you're going to purl two, Then you're going to knit two. You're going to purl one. Knit one and then purl two. Now that's your first row. Now you're going to do the second row and then you're going to repeat these two rows until you have a total of 20 rows. Okay, so you're going to knit 10 over. This is row 2. This is the second row. So you're going to knit 10 over. And then you're going to purl 2. Then you're going to knit 1. Purl 1. knit two, then you're going to purl two. Okay, you're going to repeat these last two rows that I just did and over and over until you have a total of 20 rows. So you need to do 18 more rows. Okay, and that completes your length of the um, the booty. Then you're going to go about keeping in mind what you did here. We did a decrease of um, six total stitches and you're going to keep that in mind and we're going to do a drawstring toe but we're going to do it look like a little kitchener on the last four stitches. So go ahead and pause the video, complete the foot, and then we'll show you how to do the toe. Okay, I've done the body of my booty. I'm ready to do the toe, which we're going to do a drawstring toe kind of thing, except for the last few stitches we're going to do a kitchener so that it's nice and smooth at the end, but you'll need to sew up the gaps. Okay, so to start out we're going to do, we're going to divide the loom in half and we're going to decrease one half and then we'll decrease the other half. And you're going to decrease it down to, um, what do we do over here, six? So you decrease it down to six. And how that works is we're going to go one, two, here's our halfway mark here. We'll go, we'll be that guide right there. So you're going to knit your way over, okay, since we're going to do the back half, we're going to knit our way over. I'm going to show you a couple of rows and then I'm going to tell you to get, to decrease it down to um, six stitches. Okay, and we're all the way over there. And then what we want to do is we want to take this end one and move it over. Okay, so you knit it to your halfway point and then you decrease by one and then you're going to knit all the way to your starting point. And you're going to decrease by one. You're going to continue this knitting to one end and then decreasing, knitting to one end and then decreasing until you're down to six. So here we are back at the beginning. 
and then what we're going to do is we're going to move that stitch in one. You're going to knit two together. Knit to the other end and decrease again. And you're going to continue this until you have six stitches left. And then, so pause the video and complete decreasing down this half to six stitches. And then um, I'll show you the front half and how to do the design down to the tip of the toe. And then we'll show you how to do the Kitchener bind off. So go ahead and continue and then I'll show you this side. Okay, you see what I've done. I, um, I got it down to four stitches and now I want to work the other half and decrease it down. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to cut the yarn. I can cut it later. Okay. Um, I'm going to, so that I can tie the ends of cut, I'm just going to weave it over here before I start working. So what I want to do is I want to purl and purl and then I need to knit two then purl one knit one purl two okay now I'm going to decrease that over and I realize it should be purl two together but I'm just going to knit the two together it's at the toe it's not going to make a real huge difference okay now we're going to knit two then you're going to purl one and knit one and purl two and we're going to be decreasing down to a total of four stitches okay we're going to decrease on the end there and then we're going to knit those two together then we're going to knit two purl one knit one and you can purl that one you can decrease it down you're going to knit two together then you're going to knit one purl it knit purl decrease which is your last decrease because you'll see you're down to four stitches you're going to knit the two together knit the next stitch purl and knit and you'll see that you've decreased down to four stitches on this side and kept with the patterning here. So it continues the patterning down to the tip of the toe. Now what we want to do is we want to transfer these four stitches over to here. Okay. And that is actually pretty easy. What you want to do is you want to just pick up these four stitches. This is a good way to get practice on the Kitchener bind off. You can draw string it together but um, it's really not necessary if you don't want to do it this way. If you want to make it easier on yourself, you can draw string it. Okay, so take it over and you want to line the stitches up evenly with the other side. So whatever stitch was right across from this one, you want to line it up that way. So, as an explanation, 
the stitch that was over here that was closer to your starting point went directly over directly over directly over lines it right up okay what you want to do now is you want to cut your end and then we'll start our weave and you want to cut kind of a extensive end so that you have room to weave okay our working yarn is over here all right and what you're going to do is you're going to send the needle through the top side of the bottom stitch okay then you're going to send the needle through the top side of the top stitch then you're going to go to the next top stitch on the next set over and you're going to go in a purl direction through the bottom of it okay then you're going to go back to the bottom stitch on the previous and go through the bottom of it like a purl make sure that you don't send the needle this way send it this way you want it like that see okay then what you want to do is you want to send the needle through the top of the bottom so see you're sending it through the top side which is like a knit then you want to send it through the top side like a knit on that same set then you're going to go to the top stitch on the next set of pegs and you're going to go through the bottom like a purl okay then you're going to come back to the bottom stitch of the previous and you're going to go through the bottom like a purl okay then you're going to go through the bottom stitch like a knit then you're going to go through the top stitch like a knit then you're going to go through the bottom of the top stitch like a purl on the net on the last one you're going to come back to the previous one and go through a, like a purl through the bottom stitch like that okay then you're going to go through the bottom of the last stitching like a knit and then through the top like a knit all right there you go now what you want to do is you want to snug it up as best you can Okay, then what you want to do is you want to take them off. Switch to my hook. Okay. Put that needle through here. All right, and put our loom to the side. And as you can see, you barely see the difference. All right, at this point, you're wanting to sew up the sides. All right. So you'll want to sew up the sides, and I'm going to cut that string I didn't cut in half. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to knot this side so that, that stitch is solid, and then I'm going to sew down this way, and sew down this way, and that completes that okay so that completes that toe when you go to sew I like to tighten up my cast on stitches and it's a little more of a challenge when you have the pearls in there but I'll show you how to do it so I'm going to pull my tail to find out where my last stitch is there it is so I know that my stitch I need to work this way because that's my last stitch so that means that this is my stitch I'm going to start with and then I find there's my next stitch lightly pull it don't pull it to super tight just pull it to where it's uh, still loose but tighter than it was pearls can confuse you they're going to be more on the back side than the front side okay if you don't want the confusion you can do a first row knit but 
um, that's the thing. See, it's back here instead of up here. And you don't have to do this process. This is my preference. I think it looks cleaner at the top to do it this way. Okay. Ah, oh, there we go. It's on the back. If it's not maven, you find where it will. And it's easier to try these techniques on a larger size uh, kind of concept like this. So you can try this tightening techniques and everything because you can see it easier. You can see the Kitchener easier if you want to practice the little Kitchener bind off thing rather than trying to tackle it in such a small thing and having invested so much time only for the toe to get messed up. This doesn't have as much time invested in it so it's a little less daunting in my opinion to try new techniques on say a project like this. Um, so that's kind of an idea. All right, I've lightly done that. And see, it still has stretch, but it looks a lot neater at the top. Okay, what's next is you can do an I-cord, but I prefer a really quick crochet chain, particularly with this size yarn, it's easier. If you're doing with a little thinner yarn, you're gonna have to do a chain and a single crochet. I believe I did about 50, six stitches to be able to get to around to the entire perimeter of the sole. And what I'm using is a size K hook. So I will show you how to do that. If you've not done crochet before, it's really not bad. We're doing the easy stuff here. Okay, so take the short side, drape it over, and the long side there, Push the hook away from you and back around. Grab the long side that's connected to the skein and pull through the loop. There is your slip. Now what you want to do is you want to yarn over, which is a wrap in crochet, and wrap around the hook and pull through. Take that, wrap it around, and pull through. Wrap, pull through. Wrap, pull through. Wrap, pull through. And you're going to do this a total of uh, 56, 54 times. And what you want to do is you can take your other one and you can just measure around and make sure that it lines up. So go ahead and pause the video, get your chain done, sew your side up, and get your hot glue gun ready and ready to assemble. And you'll need a thinner needle and some thinner yarn. I'm using a Caron's light pink yarn that matches this. And um, we're going to be sewing our booty onto our sole, but the uh, chain you're making here is going to have to be glued on. So go ahead, pause the video, complete that much, get your hot glue gun ready and we will work on assembling our booty together so that you can see how this is done. Okay, I've warmed up my glue gun and I've got my cord ready. I've sewn and tucked in all my ends. And uh, as you can see, I put it on there and it fits perfectly around it where it's not even gonna take any effort to sew it on. Okay, so what I wanna do is I wanna see the braid looking side and I wanna put it on the outside and I wanna start on the heel you don't notice the back of a shoe as much as you do so that you um, don't have such an obvious thing. What you want to do is you want to apply glue very thoroughly as you can see I'm applying quite a bit of glue there and I'm going to attach it and make sure that it's pressed down from top and bottom and I'm going to go around and I'm going to thoroughly glue all the way around like this and glue it down. Okay, just go ahead and pause the video and heavily glue all the way around the edging. You want it solidly glued down because this is the thing that you're going to sew your booty to that's going to keep it on the sole. We don't want to put any glue on the bottom because it'll come through the yarn and then you'll have uh, sharp spots that'll poke through your foot. And so this keeps that from happening. So keep in mind what you want to do is thoroughly glue down the edge and then um, we'll be ready to show you how to sew on the booty. So go ahead and get that done and we'll go from there. 
Okay, I have thoroughly glued on my trim here, and now it's time to sew on our booty. And I like to start back at the heel and line it up like that. And I like to start on this one side, okay? And you'll see that I've got a similar color, and I've got a slip stitch, a slip knot, excuse me, a slip knot sorry on the other end my brain is not working today and you're going to tighten that up great thing is you'll be able to tuck that tail under there all right so what you want to do is you want to line that up and you want to start sewing now to make it nice and even i send it through each half of that braid There's an overlap, which you should have a little bit of an overlap in your work. I to bring my water. Okay, we're back to doing half of it. Okay. And we're getting over to here. So you see half the braid goes up through there. Half the braid. Then gather a stitch from the booty. Half the braid, gather a stitch from the booty. And you're going to end up doing this all the way around. And you shouldn't have to stretch at all the boot to make it fit. As you can see, mine will fit exactly. And you shouldn't have to. It should go on easily and cleanly. And sewing should not take that much energy either to sew on. So, once you get started with this, it should be fairly easy to just sew on. And you're going to sew it on all the way around. And you should start to see it getting pretty solid. Um, you may want to go in and make sure that your seam's pretty tight. Again, keep in mind, this is what is attaching your booty to the sole. The other thing to keep in mind is make sure, because usually they have a texture, make sure the same texture is on the bottom. This is a softer texture on top. That's the side I'm using. Make sure your textures are the same so that you have one foot, one side, one foot, the other side. So once you sew this up all the way around, you want to tie it off and tuck your ends in. And you want to tie it off pretty good. Um, the great thing is is it, you can um, sew it back on if it comes off or if you need to make a fresh boot for the top all you'd have to do is take the seam out and you've not affected the bottom in any way. If you wanted to use rope instead of yarn you could you, you could do that. So that is how you make a pair of booties with adding a flip-flop bottom. And as you can see, it's really not that difficult when it comes down to it. So you can see I've already attached half of it. I'll get around the corner and then I'll have you just go about your business finishing it off. Naturally you'll make two of them. So that makes it real easy to gather. And I find that this size I've made is the most versatile, but if you've got smaller feet than like a size 8, say, uh, you want to make some smaller. Usually these kinds of cheap soles are about the same width across the board, so you can use the same loom, but you'll want to do less rows. 
So there we are, getting around the corner. I'm fixing to go down the side. So you finish sewing up down the side, tie it off, tuck it in under there, and you will have this as your finished. And it looks funny right now, but when you stick the foot in, it, it works perfectly. So that is how you make a pair of booties that will go on a flip-flop sole and stay together.